Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle podcast, episode number 30. My idea of professionalism is probably a lot of people's idea of obsessive. David Fincher. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Please don't forget to check out freefilmbook.com. That's freefilmbook.com to get your free audio download from Audible. And our sponsor today is USC Film School's only online course, Directing the Actor by the legendary Nina Poach. You can download that at indiefilmhustle.com forward slash USC. Now today, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about music videos. Now I know this is Indie Film Hustle, but... A lot of filmmakers start off in, in music videos, uh, David Fincher, Michael Bay, uh, Ridley Scott, uh, a few, a bunch of other people start on commercials and music videos. And I think it's a great, uh, a great tool, a great place to learn, experiment, and grow as a filmmaker. So I've shot a few music videos in my day. Not a lot, but I have worked on, gosh, probably hundreds of music videos with some of the biggest artists in the world. Um, but I did direct a music video with uh, for a band called Ozo Motley, a Grammy Award winning band, Ozo Motley, and the the stand up comedian Gabriel Iglesias, as also known as Fluffy, uh, I did two videos for them for Comedy Central, and uh, the second video uh, is called Stand Up Revolution, and that's the one we're going to be concentrating on today. It was a very very big budget, um, well not big budget, I mean, but it was a it was the biggest budget I've ever worked on, uh, and it was a pretty large broad, uh, large production. So I wanted to kind of break down the process a little bit, at least my process. This is not the ultimate process, this is just my process of how I shot the music video, my experiences with it, uh, and so on. So before you finish listening to this, it really would be helpful for you to watch the music video that I have in the show notes. If you're in a car and you can't see it, it's all good. You can watch it afterwards. So first thing I do when I get a song, is uh, when I get a, a music video gig, is listen to the song. Listen to it probably about 20, 30 times and just have it on repeat constantly, constantly. Just listen to it. And then as things start, as ideas start coming up, images start coming up, I start jotting them down. I start figuring out concepts. I start putting it all together. And since of my mind as an editor, uh, it is easy for me to kind of put things together in that fashion. So I start thinking about ideas and I knew the budget was going to be a little bit larger than our last budget. So I came up with this grand idea of, you know, visual effects, there's going to be bomber planes, there was going to be a huge warehouse, it was going to be thousands of extras digital, and it was just going to be this massive thing because it was a revolution. It was called Stand Up Revolution. So uh, Gabe you know, saw my, my initial uh, concept and he's like, you know, Alex, I really love it a lot, but uh, I don't think we can afford this. <laughs> so we kind of toned it down. So Gabe gave me the uh, idea. He's like, look, I, I want to shoot it at the Roxy. Uh, now, the Roxy, for those who don't know, is a legendary uh, club here on the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles. So I was like, he's like, just make it around the Roxy and let's come up with a concept around the Roxy. I'm like, okay. So now I had my location. So that made it a little easier. So then I just started building up this whole story around Gabe play, playing a valet. Uh, and then the Kardashians come up and they kidnap, or they kind of kidnap the Kardashians and take their place to go into this red carpet, to go into the show to see Ozo Motley. And it's this whole kind of surreal thing. So then Gabe and his main man, Martine, are dressed up as Kardashians, which if you haven't seen the video yet, um, you're missing out. They are quite sexy men. Now, I know a lot of people, a lot of directors like to storyboard. Um, since I'm not an artist and I am kind of a, per a, per a perfectionist, I don't like storyboarding unless I have someone who will do the storyboarding for us. For me, and at this point, I didn't. On my film Broken, I storyboarded everything, as the book that I released called "The Art of Broken" <laughs> definitely shows. So, I, I do like storyboarding, but for music videos generally, there's not enough budget to do storyboarding. So, what I like to do is shot list. So, I actually shot list everything out very detailed and very organized. And generally, I'll have a shot list of let's say 20 shots for a scene, which will then be pared down to probably about 10 shots and we might shoot eight because <laughs> that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So I always kind of sh shoot for the stars and then just start pairing things back little by little as the day uh, goes on. So um, like I said before, our location was the Roxy, uh, which had its own unique 
challenges uh, working in a kind of legendary uh, legendary club like that but they were wonderful to work with and always you know wherever your locations are uh, you know I'm talking about a you know a larger bigger production kind of music videos I know a lot of you out there are going to start doing low budget music videos so you know, you're going to kind of run and gun it you're going to do kind of guerrilla filmmaking and that's good uh, that's perfectly fine that's what I did and that's what I still do on many occasions but this was kind of like the, you know, for me at least, it was kind of like a really kind of a Rolls Royce experience, having everything, you know, there and and legit. <laughs> so, uh, the equipment we used, we used, uh, we shot it on the Red Epic. I decided to shoot 4K because, uh, and I know if you guys have heard my don't sh- why indie filmmakers should not shoot 4K episode, which has been the most controversial episode and the most listened to episode uh, in the history of the show. Uh, I do love shooting 4K. I I didn't shoot 5K because 5K was overkill, and also it just uh, I the workflow at the time I didn't have the gear to really make the workflow run very smoothly at the time. I shot this probably a few years ago, a couple, a couple of years ago, about three years ago or so. So we decided to shoot 4K, and we were gonna we we're gonna end up mastering to 1080p anyway for a broadcast. So it was perfectly fine. I got to recompose a lot of shots because we shot 4K. And then we also used another beautiful piece of technology called the Techno Crane. Now, if you guys as filmmakers ever get a chance to use a Techno Crane, please do so. It is the most wonderful and beautiful piece of film gear I've ever played with in my life. Uh, it is it is an expensive piece of gear. Um, you know, it's what gets those really dynamic shots. Basically, it's a crane that goes anywhere and does anything uh, almost almost automatically. So you can kind of just hover thirty feet right above the ground and then just swoop up and come down. And the, the video that I did before um, with Gabe called, Hey, it's fluffy. We shot an entire, his entire backyard, which was um, a big, huge pool scene with a, a you know ton of people. I lit, I literally didn't move the camera off the crane. It just stayed on the crane, the entire shoot. We just kind of floated the camera around, got all the sorts. I, I mean, I got so much coverage. It was, it was amazing. So I fell in love with it right away. <laughs> Uh, so we had, I had to have it for this one uh, as well. So the Techno Crane was a wonderful experience. Uh, yeah, I'll put some links on uh, in the show notes so you can kind of see what the Techno Crane is and the experience it is. So when filming, uh, a couple tips when filming uh, a music video. Make sure you record your production audio. You won't use your production audio, but it's wonderful and helpful for syncing when you're going to go sync up uh, the, the song to um, the footage, so it's really helpful. Sometimes, like in our case, we actually had some skits and some dialogue uh, that was before and after and during the uh, the music video. So we actually needed to record a natural sound. Then we uh, I did we had a few different setups on the music video. We had the performance setup, which was the main setup of the band uh, on the stage at the Roxy. We had the skit out front of the of the Roxy, which is Gabe and Martine doing some dialogue, uh, kidnapping the Kardashians. And coming out uh, dressed as the Kardashians in drag. And then the red carpet scene uh, as well. That we had a huge red carpet scene with a bunch of celebrities walking by. With a ton of extras. And then the crowd scene uh, inside. Which was all, uh, there was like an actual little fight. Fun fight and scene of Gabe and Martine. And in the the front of the crowd and things like that. So a couple tips as far as a crowd. When you hear a crowd you're like, oh my god he must have had 100 people there. We did, and we had a. We actually paid uh, twenty actors, uh, twenty uh, extras, to be there. Uh, anytime you're going to get extras, you know it's great to hire your friends or bring your friends along and things like that. But being an extra is actually really tough work, in the sense that you have to be there all day. And if you're not getting paid, or you're getting paid a little bit, and you're not a professional actor or a professional extra, it's difficult because you basically just have to be there all day, waiting around, doing things. And a lot of times, your friends will bail on you after a few hours because it's not as glamorous as it looks on television. Uh, so it is it is a tough job. So we actually made a conscious effort. Now we did have some friends and we did throw extra friends in there, but generally we had I think about 15 or 20 extras that were there all day. My uh, my amazing line producer Sean uh, definitely helped out a lot. And, and by the way, if you're doing a music video, God, please find a producer. Find a line producer or a producer, um, unit production manager, someone who can help you if you're the director and you're going to try to produce this as well as direct and edit and cast and everything else you're going to lose your mind depending obviously on the size of the 
of the project. But if you can at all, even on the smallest budgets, even on budgets that I had were, you know, 500 bucks or a thousand bucks to do a music video, always hire or try to find someone to take that off your plate as a director. Because as a director, you have so much on your plate already. Trying to deal with locations, getting lunch, all that kind of stuff is really, really difficult to do. So I had a great uh, line producer called Sean Newhouse. His name's Sean Newhouse. Uh, shout out to Sean. He's uh, amazing, and I worked with him on multiple projects, a handful of projects with him, and he is uh, he was great, so uh, invaluable. Without him, I couldn't have done it. And then I also hired a wonderful DP, Ernesto. Uh, I'm not going to m- massacre his last name, but uh, Ernesto, who might be on the show in the coming weeks. I'm trying to get him on. He is a, a big-time DP now, but uh, Ernesto's wonderful. And uh, he was uh, he brought all his toys to play with, uh, his cameras and stuff like that. So it was a lot of fun to shoot with him. So find a good DP, find a good line producer. Those are two very key positions that you can, that you really need to find when shooting a music video. So anyway, to how I use these extras, uh, we just kind of grouped them together and shot specifically. And you just fill the frame. All you have to do is fill the frame. If you can fill the frame, you're able to have the illusion that there's more people in the shot. So the same extras that we were using in the, inside the club were the same extras that we were using outside the club when we were trying to do all the, fo- you know, all the photographers and all the crowds and the fans trying to get to the inside, inside the bar. The exact same people, we just re- we changed their clothes, changed their hairstyles, and we were good to go. So you have to think about those kind of things because if not, it would have cost us a fortune. Even on a decent-sized budget music video, it would have cost us a fortune to have 50, 100 people there because it's not only about 50 or 100 people, it's about feeding those people, housing those people, you know, bathroom breaks for those people, bathrooms for those people. There's a lot of other things you think about, like, oh, I could get 100 people. Well, like, well, there's a lot of other costs involved down the line. So always keep thinking a few steps ahead, not just thinking about what you can get right now, which is what I talked about in another episode about post-production workflow or don't hire a DP just because they have a camera a red camera because it might you might have that camera now but working down going down the workflow pipeline might be a headache for you later or you might have not thought of things that cost you more later so free doesn't always mean free i digress sorry guys so we shot this it was wonderful we shot it all out in about 12 hours i think it was 10 12 hours uh it was a night shoot so uh it was it was pretty exhausting and then i basically brought it back in uh transcoded everything at the time we did not have at least I didn't have uh, options to edit this in uh, RAW, so I transcoded everything using my Red Rocket uh, and then edited it in Final Cut 7, uh, Final Cut Pro 7, edited it all, and then brought that EDL, exported that EDL after I was done editing it, exported that EDL into DaVinci, where uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is my color suite, then after that I colored it all in RAW, I reconnected the RAW, colored it in RAW, used the Red RAW, file to get some amazing looks and able to do things that I wouldn't have been able to do unless I would have shot a 4K RAW. Perfect example, if you notice towards the very end of the music video, there's, I think, the last shot, right? Be- the second to last shot is Gabe opening up the door. Well, that is a sh- that is a full, I shot that full 4K. I had to zoom in because I didn't have the time to get the coverage that I needed. So when I shot it, I noticed that I didn't have any coverage with the door with, with, uh, Gabe opening the door without showing them, showing the, the audience the two kidnapped Kardashians inside. So I had no way to do it. So I wanted to do a little pop in. So I popped in, reframed it, shot to, then I did a shot to them, and then I cut back to Gabe, and then it worked perfectly. I would have not been able to do that if I wouldn't have shot in a 4K. In 4K. If I would have shot that 2K or 1080p, I would have been in very big trouble. I wouldn't have been able to finish off the shot the way I wanted to. So that is one of the luxuries of shooting at a very high resolution, as long as you can handle the workflow. So we output it to 1080p, sent it over to Comedy Central, and it aired on Gabe's show, Stand Up Revolution, which I think it was in the first season that aired. I think that was the very first season it aired that music video. And it's gone on to be downloaded, God, I think about 2 million times on uh, Gabe's YouTube channel, uh, because Gabe's YouTube channel is insane. If you guys haven't had a chance to listen to Gabe, uh, his stand-up is hilarious so i'm gonna put some links in the show notes to uh, gabe not that he needs my my little traffic my god but so that was kind of the real kind of quick tips on how i shot this music video we also have a making of a video inside the uh on the show notes as well that sean newhouse my line producer shot with his brother and kind of gives you a little bit more detail 
and you can kind of see the layout of how we did everything. In there, you'll see my interview. I'm exhausted. <laughs> you can see it in my face. Uh, it was it was it was a rough week for me that week. So you you you'll see me a little bit tired, uh, not my normal energetic self. So uh, I hope this helped you guys out a little bit on how to make a music video. I've shot a few music videos in my day, and I, like I said, I've worked on a ton of uh, big music videos over my career, and I've seen a lot of music videos. So music videos are a wonderful way to get started in the film business. And if you want to try to make a career of it, my God, God bless, go for it. It's a little rougher, and I'm going to go on a little bit side note here on the business of music videos. Right now, doing music videos at and trying to make a living doing music videos is really tough because the budgets for music videos have dropped so dramatically that something that normally, you know, I remember the days that, you know, I was working on music videos back in the day in the 90s where second and third level artists from, from labels not even the big artists, but like second tier, third tier artists were getting $100,000, $150,000 budgets for their music videos, shooting on a film, big visual effects, the whole ball of wax. And now you hear these big, you, you'd be surprised at some of the big, biggest celebrities, biggest music stars out there. They're doing music videos for 10 grand. Now, I know a lot of you in the audience are saying 10 grand, that's a lot. Well, you know, when you start adding it up, if you want to try to make a living on this, if you make one of those a month, or two of those a month, if you're lucky, you're not going to make a whole heck of a lot of money. It's a it's a it's a very it's a very tough hustle, at least from my point of view, where I'm standing right now. It's a tough hustle. So, and ten thousand is a huge budget for music videos nowadays. That's a big star. That's a star that if I mentioned the name of the star, you would go, "Oh, I know them." So, don't get me wrong. You know, Taylor Swift and Beyonce are not doing ten thousand dollar music videos, but they're the top of top tier of the top tier. Some other big stars that are doing side projects are just you just be surprised. Now every song gets a music video and they can't afford, the artists and the labels can't afford to just be putting out $200,000 music videos for every song. You know, there's eight songs in, a, in, in an album or so on. So they can't afford it, so they have to drop the cost of it. And also because there's so many people doing music videos and so many people doing them so cheaply, they brought the budget down. So and that happened with commercials and that happens with everything else, but they brought the budget down so much that now it's almost a joke to shoot a music video. So, you know, when I do a music video, it has to be at a certain level, certain certain budget level, at least for me, where I am at in my career at this point. If you're just starting out, do what you got to do. If you don't get paid, don't get paid. Just start getting out there. Start, you know, experimenting. Start making a reel for yourself. And then slowly you can build up. When you're first starting out, you're gonna not going to get paid. You're not going to make a whole lot of money right up front. But at least you can start building the experience, building that cachet. And a lot of the big, big music video directors that I worked with did exactly that. Uh, I worked with one director who was lit, that literally camped out at the label until finally they gave him a shot to do a music video. And then from there, he started going, growing and growing and growing until he finally got, got Rihanna. And when he got Rihanna, that the door opened. Once Rihanna, he did a Rihanna music video, then everybody came calling. Jennifer Lopez came calling in. Uh, Jay Z came calling, and Nas came calling, and every, all these big, huge uh, rappers and artists started coming out out of the woodwork for him. But you know that's a one in a million kind of story. Most music video directors are just hustling, man. And I, I know, and I know them. I've I've worked with a lot of them. They're hustling, and you know a lot of them are trying to get into commercials because they're like, man, I can't keep doing this. You know, it's fun maybe for the first six months or a year, but afterwards you're like, you know, am I going to keep doing this? The budgets aren't going up. You know, I have a hell of a reel already and I'm still, you know, it, it's, it's a tough gig. It's a tough hustle. But music videos are a lot of fun. And if you can get in there and get to those bigger budgets and get to those artists and, and sign up with the proper production company that can get you those kind of gigs, then that's the way to go for it. But that's a little bit of the side note of the business of music videos. Um, one of the reasons I don't do a lot of music videos anymore is because the budgets went down so much that it's just I just can't do it anymore. You know, I have a family to feed. You know, I'm not 21 anymore, but you know, if I was, if I was younger and just starting out, man, I would be hustling hard, 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 hard. I know one director, uh, one vid music video director that worked underneath that other music video director I was talking about, the one who did Rihanna, and uh, you know, he was a young kid, man, and he's just started hustling hard, just started getting all these music videos one after another, just you know, working for free, just shooting, shooting, shooting. He got picked up, and now he starts doing other music videos. Now he's doing photography and now he's going into that world and you never know where it could lead. But 
the music video business itself to to sustain yourself, it's not like the days of David Fincher, Michael Bay, Spike Jones. Those days are gone. And they are only around for very, very few of the high level um, music video directors out there. But most of those guys are not just music video directors anymore. They also do commercial work, which is where the real money is, uh, as well as uh, some do feature work, uh, narrative, uh, web media, and so on. So I hope this episode was a little bit helpful to you guys, kind of helped you a little bit on how to make a music video. It's not a full-blown tutorial, but it kind of gives you an eye into my process of making a music video and kind of a little bit of an a, a little bit of a window into the business side of music videos. So now if you guys want to watch the Stand Up Revolution music video and the behind the scenes making of, of it, head over to indiefilmhustle.com forward slash zero thirty for all the show notes. I'm going to put all the links of everything I talked about in the show notes as well. Please don't forget to head over to filmmakingpodcast.com and leave us an honest review. It helps the show out tremendously, guys. Thanks again, and keep that hustle going, keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.